All right, we are now live once again. Today is what day is today? What day is today? I don't, I don't even remember. Happy it's Friday. Friday. <laughs> yeah, happy Friday. <laughs> it is. It has been a very, very long week. Um, it's been a very busy week for us around here at Level Aviation. And sun and fun is approaching, so it's yeah. always the, a month before and a month after sun and fun. It's always crazy for us. It is. It is. It's just a that crazy time of the year when trade show season we have sun and fun then we have the alaska uh, show we are going to also going to be an aero in um germany which is right after sun and right fun. after sun and fun no uh, breaks no, <laughs> no breaks at all <laughs> and then we have um well i mentioned alaska already and then we have the the uh Oshkosh, which is one of our biggest show i would say maybe the most the one that requires the most preparation we have to pack everything we have to travel all the way to um wisconsin which ananda and i we drive all the way I van, there i drive my uh, van I, she takes a van i drive the rv and then uh fun enough what i do is i put uh, a trailer in the back of ananda's van so she enjoys dra mm. traveling with a trailer in the back <laughs> I, do not. I i yeah i hate backing up but yeah <laughs> One time I broke Ricardo's uh, air conditioner. Yes, you broke the air conditioner from now. <laughs> uh, anyway. The wine job, the wine job. All right, guys, let us know where you're watching from. We're very excited to have you here. Let us know what airplane do you fly. Um, that way we kind of know, uh, we kind of, we want to see one. We're kind of curious here. One type of airplanes you, do you fly and where do you fly? I think to, we may have a different... Um, viewers mm -hmm. we have a different audience today we're a uh, different audience so if you've never been on this live uh basically m most every fridays we do a live to um uh, uh, answer any questions that you may have about our avionics we do wireless avionics uh autopilots ADS adsb receivers etc so this is a space for us to collect uh, all the answers, uh, all the questions that we get on social media, we are answer them here and you get the chance to ask the questions live. So on the chat uh, on to the right or the bottom, if you're using a mobile device, uh, you can just say hi or tell us where you're coming from or ask any questions. Today, we're going to be talking about Bush, bush all planes. about bush planes yes which i know nothing about so i'm excited <laughs> <laughs> uh for, for this live and i wanted to give a shout out to bush planes patagonia they randomly con like coincidentally contacted me last week just saying hi and that they're big fans uh and they have the first bush uh school i guess in patagonia and wow. so I wanted to say hi to them. Um, From the very, very south of South America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call it also the end of the world, you know, and all the way, like the, <laughs> the southernmost point of South America, which is pretty exciting. I mean, that that, that should be cool. And then uh, make sure you give them a follow so we can see all the stuff that they, they're doing. So we do have a special guest today. But before we get into that, we also have a really nice uh, announcement. Um, so I think this announcement, I mean, it's very, very well. It's very long overdue, um, and we're announcing our brand new online merch. Uh, so. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> Come on, Ananda, we previewed this out before the show. So. No, we didn't. Uh, we normally just raffle uh, these on our lives every Friday. Are we raffling one today? We should, yeah. We should come up with the question. So probably okay. at the end, stay tuned until the end of the live, and then we're going to be giving away a custom hat. But if you're not the lucky winner, we also have them for sale on our online store. So you can go to levelaviation.com and you can uh, buy one of these hats and then you can customize it with your tail number if you like to. Right. So normally like people, uh, pilots put their end number here or, you know, you can put your airport or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, you really see if you can find my number. Yeah. So, um, also what we do have is we also have our shirts which we, we're going to have for sale. Uh, some of them have in the back says, watch your attitude. Some of them says, this is how we roll. And then the, what yours says? I don't know. Yours says, oh, watch your attitude. <laughs> Check that. And then we'll do have one that says autopilot mode on. And then the, this is how we roll 
Sure. So make sure you check that out. We can customize it with your tail number. We also have this nice jacket that a lot of people ask me during my life. I wear it every single time on my life. And then, them. yeah, oh, right here. You can also customize it with your tail number. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, we do have a 15% store wise. So it applies to all of our instruments, to our brand new merch, um, to all of the, all of the stuff store wide. So whatever you want. So make sure you take advantage of our 15% discount. So, so his name, we forgot introductions. His name is Ricardo. That's right. <laughs> My name is Ananda and we have our guest. Would you like to introduce him? Absolutely. So our next guest, we know him for a very long time. I, uh, we've been a big fans around here. Um, even, even I think, well, myself, even before I became a pilot, I always enjoyed, I mean, I just, I'm, I just became a pilot recently, but I always enjoy uh, watching his videos and going through uh, like the most random places you'll you ever need to see. So one day, one day I can do those kind of flights in Florida, but I don't know if I can do it with an RV. So, <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, I would like to introduce to the camera our friend Cory Robin. Hi, Cory. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? Good. <laughs> How are you, sir? Good to be here. And um, I do have my Level Aviation hat customized with my N number, which Look I'm really that. excited uh, <laughs> to have. Thank you very much. So make sure you go visit Level's website and check out that awesome merch. It is great stuff. I'm yeah. so happy to be here. It's kind of weird to be online right now. I've taken a break from yeah. social media. You have. So, so this is really nice. So. I saw, I mean, it's, it's been quite a while. It's been quite a while since you, since you posted anything online as I guess. So, I mean, you said you, you will bring the tea and you will spill it. So what is that? <laughs> you get right to it. Let's talk about some of your products. No, you know, gossip. here's the, the deal. Uh, you know, it, it's been a whirlwind experience and quite humbling being a, a pilot creator on YouTube and creating videos. And, and when I started, you know, me and my friends, we just had this idea to just showcase the kind of flying we do, the bush flying, the backcountry stuff, where, which, is, which is the kind of flying I love to do. Um, but we had no idea. And, and, and personally, I just wasn't prepared for the, uh, the popularity and all the complexities that come with that. And so, you know, after a while, you get a little bit, um, I don't know how to explain it, burnout. I don't, it's not necessarily burnout per se, but it's just a strong desire to, you know, find your roots again and reconnect with what matters most to you. And I, that's really what I'm doing. And, you know, I don't necessarily, I haven't been sharing all of my exploits, all the flying and fun things that I'm doing, even though I'm still flying. So that's like the number one question people ask me, are you still flying? You know, they assume that because I'm not online that, oh, the world is falling down and things are not great. No, things are great. You know, I'm very happy. Um, I've just been spending a lot of time with family and friends and doing a lot of flying, working a lot and just living life, laughing easy. It's fun. Wow. How are you guys doing? That's, it's good to see good you. To hear, Corey. <laughs> I'm glad you're still flying and having fun and connecting to your roots. Um, it's always good just for perspective, just to see something else and, and take a break from social media. Um, I also do it from time to time. Um, so yeah, it's good to to see you again and and hear that you're yeah. doing great. Yeah. yeah, we're doing. I mean, we're doing great around here. We, I mean, we just released our brand new uh, product, the Joy, which is just like a little smart uh, control. It's been, yeah. I mean, probably you've seen it around the shows for a while. Uh, it it just took a lot sometimes research and development. And Ananda, like you can show on the camera right here. Um, I if Corey has seen it. I'm really excited about this product. Ananda, you did show me this at Oshkosh. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it was a secret yeah. private showing or something. <laughs> but but this is a very exciting product that will go very well, like slide that right on the ghost stick. It, it, that would it be will, perfect. It will. 
So. Especially with all that cool wireless functionality, makes the install super easy. I'm excited about that thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so so we've been very excited here. We've been very very busy. Uh, we do have some stuff in the oven, let's say. So a um, lot of stuff. A so lot of stuff. Oh, good. Since the release of the autopilot, um, people have been so. Not every airplane is the same, as you know. <laughs> Yeah. So, because we have a Trinitat based autopilot, we've had to deal with different aerodynamics, so flat prone airplanes, uh, airplanes that have a lot of adverse yaw uh, and stuff like that. So, we have been mm -hmm. doing a lot of research and development trying to fit our autopilot solution to different um, airframes and different airplanes, yeah. basically. So that takes a lot. And I, that, <laughs> I'm a big testament to that because when I came to you and said, hey, I want your autopilot, but I have a slow airplane. Yeah. We've had all kinds of issues getting things to work with the bush planes, but I'm happy to report that this is like one of my favorite airplane upgrades. Uh, <laughs> this autopilot, especially since I've added that third channel, the rudder, the yaw damp channel, mm -hmm. it just makes flying effortless and I'm a I'm a traveler in my Super Cub. I get out and I've I've been across the country now 11 times since I bought that airplane in 2016. Wow. And that's, you know, from Utah going to Florida or New York or Alaska. I've had it as far down south as Costa Rica. And, you know, I've just been everywhere in that. And having an autopilot changes the whole travel experience. You know, I used to fly for eight hours and you know you get out of the airplane and and you're just lethargic and tired now i'm just doing my scans i hop out of the airplane and i'm just i'm just ready to go and i actually want to go flying again usually i'm kind of done for the day you you arrive at the fly-in or your destination and you're kind of just exhausted but i can tell you that the that it's quantifiable the 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 difference and the impact it makes on the physicality of my flying. I can fly a lot safer. I'm a lot less stressed out. I can monitor the systems better. My scans are better. It's just, you know, I never thought that in a bush plane it would make such a dramatic impact, but it's, uh, it's my favorite upgrade by far. I'm loving it. So I appreciate it. No, and all the help you guys have given us to refine it, because it did take a little, a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, it was really awesome. Research and development, especially for slow speed airplanes, and a lot of airplanes with, uh, uh, with yaw damper. So uh, I mean, with like um, um, adverse yaw. So it's it's been it's been quite a challenge. But we're getting also very close to to do some some announcements when it comes to to bush planes and the autopilot. Now, let me ask you something: Were you were you one of those persons that uh, you'll be like, if you're if you if you're flying with an autopilot, you're not you you shouldn't be a pilot or like why would you have an autopilot on a bush plane? Because I do hear a lot. You know, like you're not a I've real never pilot been, if you have an autopilot. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's my personality, but I've never been one of those die hard, you know, choose a choose a line kind of person. <laughs> um, you know. You know, if you're not a tailwheel pilot, you're not a real pilot. Or if you have an <laughs> autopilot, you're not really flying. You know, I've never been that way. I've always just kind of appreciated the tools and the technology that I have. But I have flown thousands of hours in the backcountry without an autopilot. Thousands, literally. And um, it is a completely new experience in the Carbon Cub having an autopilot. And, and, you know, some of the newer models, I've got one of the older Carbon Cubs because it's just a... It's more of a traditional Super Cub platform, and I love the parts interchangeability and things like that. But um, it is a simple airplane, and you would think that you wouldn't need an autopilot on a simple airplane. But when it comes to traveling, you know, and, and especially in the type of flying that I do when you add cameras and you add, you know, additional layers of complexity and a different layers of risk to your flying. And I'm very, very risk averse. I love to be safe. You know, I have four children. I have a very adventurous lifestyle that, you know, I do take some calculated risks and I live large. But at the same time, you can do it and you can do it safely. And that's one of my favorite things about the autopilot is even though I've added some of these additional layers of complexity to my flying, the autopilot does make it simpler. So to go back and answer your question, no, I've never been one of those people that was anti autopilot 
but I've definitely talked to a lot of them in the last couple of years since I've added it to my airplane. It's one of the, you know, I've got it painted with uh, hazard stripes on it so that uh -huh. people don't bump into it. Uh -huh. And so when I'm at Oshkosh, uh, this last year I parked in a private area so I could give rides. Um, just it's a little bit off airport, you know, so I could give rides during the show and stuff like that. And, and everybody that came up to the airplane, one of the first things that they noticed was these trim tabs. And it's been a constant source of conversation because it's a new component and I've got it painted a little bit differently. So it's visible. Um, but it's just been super fun having those conversations and exposing people to it. Most people are like, Anna, super cub. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. Yeah. But, you know, now much. I've got a friend. <laughs> I've got friends uh, installing them on their kit foxes. You mentioned the flapperons and stuff. And so now they're putting a trim tab out on each aileron for the balance of it. And because it is a flapperon, you do want those pressures to be equal. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it is such a wonderful tool. And, you know, I, you know, I don't want to just make this live stream of all about the autopilot, but it really has been a big source and it's changed my flying, made it safer. You know, my cross countries are a little bit different. I'm, I'm able to go farther and a little bit faster, even a little bit more efficient, save a little bit of gas money, which is important in today's economy. <laughs> Now, now, now you don't have to keep your leg on the right rudder <laughs> for eight hours. <laughs> oh, you know, and I can tell you, I actually, the yaw damp component of the autopilot, I have it permanently on. I actually never turn that thing off. It is such a different experience not having to worry about coordination so much and having an active yaw damp system. You know, it is... Honestly, it's fantastic. I can't speak about the yaw component and how like you get the uh, the two axis, you can get the aileron and the elevator, and that's amazing. And I flew on that for about a year before you guys came out with the yaw component. And then once once we got that installed, it was like, yes, it's twice as good now. So it was it was so great with the autopilot. Now with the yaw damp on there, it's just it's a total awesome experience. So anyway. So I mean, <laughs> that, I mean, it is it is a really nice uh, like experience, a nice feeling just to be hands off and enjoy enjoy a nice meal. Well, you just don't you, realize how much ride. effort you put into, you know, on the course of a, a long flight. Mm -hmm. You don't realize that you know when you land and you're taking a break, you're actually taking a break from the stress of having to manage those systems, you're, you know, the stress of having to work those rudder pedals, the stress of having to work the controls yeah. and you're taking those physical stresses out of the game. And so now you're monitoring systems and you don't have that physical component. So the mm -hmm. fatigue factor for me, you know, I'm 49 years old. It's real. <laughs> I, I pretend that I'm young, but you know, I feel that at the end of the day. And, and so that for me is a big game changer anyway. What, are, what else do you want to talk about? Right, I talk so all day about that. Let's, um, also, let's ask <laughs> our viewers, if they have any questions for us, any questions for Corey, let us know in the comment section below. Um, we're going to get yeah. to those questions. There is a, there is a question from uh, Mike Salmon. So, you know, we were talking about, like, if, you're not, if you don't have an autopilot, you're not a pilot. Mike is asking, the real question is whether you are a team north up or team track up. What are you, Corey? <laughs> Team north up or track up? So it depends on what. So there's different tools for different things. I got to be honest with you. The only time I look at those screens is if I'm navigating. If I'm, you know, for example, I've actually got my autopilot linked up to my Garmin. And so I can punch in my whole flight plan in the Garmin and in the autopilot, I can click activate, you know, it'll fly those G fly all the GPS points, do all the turns, it'll do everything. It's awesome. Um, uh, if I'm if I'm doing a flight plan and I'm like planning a Salt Lake City to Wisconsin or a Salt Lake City to Florida, I'm north up. But while I'm flying, I like to zoom in because I fly low. <laughs> and the obstacle database is very important. Mm -hmm. And those little those little alerts where the system, you know, I have everything linked up and my system is very technologically advanced for a cub. But whenever an obstacle is coming up, if it's in the database, it'll tell me obstacle, 
pull up or turn or whatever, because I fly map of the earth and that's very real. If you've seen my videos, you know that to be true. If I'm higher than a thousand feet off the ground, I'm over the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do have a question here for you. Um, if you had to build a bush plane today, what would your game plan be? Okay. You know, I, that's a very difficult question. If I had to build a bush plane, you know, my airplane is so amazing. Like, <laughs> I, it's hard, it's hard to find something better yeah. than a fully customized carbon cub. Like it's been my erector set. I've taken, I've tried about everything on it, all so sorts of tires and shocks and everything. Um, you know, a good, if I didn't have my airplane, I have to put that on there. Um, I, I think I would find just really anything that I could afford that gets me in the game that's customizable. And so, um, if, if I was, a, if I was buying a budget airplane and I was trying to get into it and still have rocket performance, I'd probably look at something like a Highlander. Okay. Because it's such a modular airplane um, and it's good, got good product support. There's a lot of them out there. So the used market's pretty good. The only problem with the bush plane market right now is it's just difficult to find a bush plane right now because it's just such a popular type of flying. It is. It's, 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 uh, it's you know, bush planes are expensive, you know. When I first started flying in the backcountry, you could buy a Super Cub for fifteen thousand dollars you know this was 20 years ago now you can't find a super cub for under two hundred thousand oh. dollars and and that's a super cub you know i'm not talking about you know crazy carbon cubs or these airplanes that are now approaching five hundred thousand dollars which blows my mind thank goodness i bought my carbon cub back when it was under two hundred thousand because <laughs> i couldn't afford one today yeah you know? i was looking into some of those prices and i was like I think I'll just stick with what we have right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, those RVs and, and, you know, Vans is actually, you know, hopefully they can get their stuff together and, and recover from their current situation and come out with this bush plane in full force and, you know, contribute to the industry. And I think they will. You know, there's just too many fans of the product and the product's just too good for it to to suffer. But um, and, you know, hopefully it hopefully it is doing well. I haven't really been following the news i could be speaking from outdated information <laughs> but uh you know the industry is an interesting place right now there's parts of it that are you know where the economy is really good and strong and then there's parts of it that are you know we're, we have to be tight and yeah. we have to be budget conscious yeah so and that's aviation i think it it's is. pretty much a cyclical it thing is. aviation has its, its ups and downs and uh we're building yeah. an rv10 right now so we're very excited about that one too oh fun mm -hmm. yeah Corey, I have a question. So I know nothing about bush planes or flying in the backcountry. Um, I always grew up with, you know, the RV and the flying from Sanford to another airport and testing eye levels. That's all I know. <laughs> um, so I'm curious to know, like, you know, it, when we're flying, when you're doing a flight plan, in the navigation app, you can always like, okay, here's this airport, here's this airport. But for for your type of flying, can you land anywhere? Like, how do you choose where you're going to land? Is it an airport or you can land, like you said, in the back country anywhere? Or how do you search where that place is? Well, it, there's there's different types of backcountry flying. There's a lot of complexity to it, but I do my flight planning pretty pretty close to the same way almost any pilot does because my airplane is thirsty and it needs fuel. And so when I plan a trip, for example, I'll plan airport to airport, but the potty breaks are the fun part. You know, I don't necessarily <laughs> wait to get to an airport for those. Um, the the rule of thumb really is in in back country is is it safe and is it legal? And so you just have to operate under some of those constraints. For example, you know, if you don't know the owner of the property, you probably can't land there. You probably shouldn't land there. And so I actually have apps. Um, hunting apps are usually the best because hunters have flushed out almost every square inch 
of this country wow. because you know <laughs> they're think of that. th that's what they do but in those apps you can find out the property owners whether it's public land and the use the use rules because then there's use rules and so it might be public land but it might be a wilderness study area and motor vehicle restricted and so you probably should not land there in fact you shouldn't land there bro be responsible <laughs> Look at those rules. We don't want we don't want to go out and tear up the backcountry. We're there to enjoy it. We love nature. That's why we're backcountry pilots, right? And so we're very conscientious about those rules and requirements. But it's really super fun to be like, oh, that is a beautiful piece of land right there. Let me whip out my app, find out where we are. Oh, it's BLM land. Are there any restrictions, wildlife restrictions? Is it wilderness study areas, is it library trust land? You know, who controls it? What's the authority? Are motor vehicles allowed there? That's kind of a big deal. That's that's one of the most safe ways to think about it. If if there's other people recreating on the land, other motor vehicles specifically, then it's probably OK for you to land there. Okay. Um, and it's public land. If it's private land and you have permission from the property owner, that's that's best case scenario. And okay. and uh, that might be more the case in the eastern United States. There's a lot less uh, public land in the east. And so you're going to find a lot of private airstrips or fields or things like that. And you can reach out to the property owners. And we found you know, we do have a community of backcountry pilots and we're all talking constantly. A lot of property owners are very open to making friends with pilots because it's a resource. You know, you become friends with a pilot. You know, a lot of ranchers out here in the West, that's how, you know, my group of pals called the Flying Cowboys got our name. We actually <laughs> did cowboy work. We helped with roundups. We, we helped separate cattle from buffalo. We help find lost cattle all the time. We do seasonal stuff where we move cattle from one region to another or from high territory to low territory to, to move grazing lands and things like that. That's how, that's the kind of flying that I've done is the working kind. Um, and that's, you know, you're landing all over the place on the sides of hills and riverbeds. And, you know, you're, you see a, uh, an injured cow or something and you want to land and check it out you might be able to save a life or he's tied up hooked up in some fence or whatever but uh yeah the kind of flying we do is vastly different than what most people yeah. are exposed to but if you think about it the roots of backcountry flying are just workers you know we're moving stuff around to remote locations and because those remote locations don't necessarily have improved airports we're landing in people's pastures. We're landing at people's, you know, in front of their house in their field. You know, we're delivering I their this type of uh, flying. Yeah, yeah, and it still goes on today. You know, up in Canada and the Yukon territories in Alaska, bush flying is very, very much a part of daily life. You know, there's still a lot of remote places in this world. Um, there's a lot of missionary stuff that goes back, you know, down in Central and South America. There's yeah. a lot of bush flying going on. You mentioned at the beginning of the, the live stream, the Patagonia bush pilots, who I'm a huge fan of. Uh, we always watch each other's content and we're friends. Um, but uh, they do a lot of that kind of stuff. Very vivid and, and global bush plane community. So it's really fun. It's, it's the kind of flying that I love. <laughs> and, and one last question uh, following that. When you say you fly low, is the height restrictions different for backcountry flying? That like you can fly lower than normal, or no? It's the same. You still have overpopulated areas, the thousand foot, you know, separation between person, vehicle, vessel structures, things like that. Okay. Um, or if you're in more rural areas, it's still a five hundred foot separation rule, but it's not an altitude specific restriction. Is it is it or is it you have to stay away from structures, persons, vehicles or vessels? Yeah. And so, you know, I'm I'm definitely making turns like if I come across a farmhouse or something and I'm zipping along and I'm only 500 feet off the ground. Well, I still want to be, you know, there's there's regulatory requirement, but there's also, you know, kind of another layer you can install on that. There's there's just being a good, kind neighbor. You don't, you know, and if I was out there, I don't want to necessarily have airplanes buzzing me all the time. Maybe I do, but I don't know that. Mm -hmm. So another layer that I install in my flying is kind of a just a layer of respect. And so I'll just kind of fly around um, and, and not bother those houses. 
I'll, I'll make an effort to fly around them. Or if I, or if it's a city or something, I will climb up. It's not that I'm, you know, going and light my hair on fire and charging <laughs> the world at 200 feet off the ground. Um, but I do enjoy flying map of the earth. I love having the ability to just chop the throttle and land at the drop of a hat. It's really, really a fun kind of flying. Um, yeah, it really is fun. And you, you you'll determine? often see, you'll often see me just post in a picture of me in a remote location doing a selfie. Hey, I, I saw this cool spot. That's, that's <laughs> you know? when I get jealous. <laughs> yeah, it's just well, fun. My, I say well, I'm here in my office or in Florida with a rainy day. <laughs> How do you determine a safe place to land? Like, you you know, you mentioned like these riverbeds and um, and I know some of these, I mean, most of these airplanes are very short takeoff, short landings, but how do you mainly, is there any factor that you go through before you say, like, okay, this is a nice safe spot? Um, how do you determine what that safe spot is? Do you have to is? fly it and come back? Or? Yeah, so safety really starts back when you're learning to fly, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have um, these really cool things called stall competitions. I love them. And so, and so I'm answering your site selection question, but I'm taking you through a whole process because it starts at those stole competitions. And if you're interested in knowing what those are, look up uh, National Stole. They're, they actually have a nationwide tour and they have different locations all over the country that you can attend in person. But they actually have a fantastic professional broadcast and they broadcast them all on the Internet as well. It's an amazing community. But in those stole competitions, you have an opportunity to learn about how to take off and land really, really short. And you get a really good idea of what your capabilities are and what the capabilities of your aircraft are. And so that's the start of your site assessment is the first thing you got to know is, can I take off and land in that distance? Can the airplane do it? Yeah. Okay, on a bad day, can I do it? On my worst on day, day, can I yeah. do it? And that's why you practice a lot in those competitions with other pilots who are skilled, um, because you're going to learn. You're in an environment where you can learn not just how to take off and land short, but how to do it properly, what happens in you know different situations. What if there's obstacles? What if you have to turn? Uh, what if there's uh, a soft terrain? What if it's hard terrain? What if it's rocky? What if there's bushes on it? You know, there's so many different considerations that can affect both the performance of you and the performance of the airplane. It's if it's quite technical, well, you've got to lengthen that runway okay. because you know you've just kind of you've just kind of make those assessments. And I always add about three times of it's a I'm ha I might be having a bad day factor. Um, and so I'll I'll look at a site. I'll definitely fly over it. Um, after a while, you get really really good of knowing what you can and can't do. But you know, I've made some mistakes. Sometimes you get into circumstances and you land at places, and you're like, "Oh crap! Maybe I shouldn't have landed here. I might not be able to take back off." <laughs> um, it, you know, and it happens more often than you think. Where you know you're with a group of pilots, and you're traveling, and and Everybody wants to land on the sandbar, but then the guy in the heavy airplane lands on the sandbar and he's like, I don't think I can take off guys. And so you're unloading all of his stuff into your airplane <laughs> <laughs> so that he can lighten up and get off that sandbar. So site selection is a very important thing. Um, it should be a part of your um, training repertoire, which starts at those competitions and really learning the capabilities of your equipment and, and what your own personal limitations are. And knowing what those are really helps you with that site selection. Interesting, interesting. We have we have maybe some uh, questions here from some of our viewers. Um, uh, we see Carl from Fly with the guys. He also joined um, our live here. He's saying hi, and What's he up, also wants to talk about um, <laughs> your for his airplane. Yep. Well, we're gonna get to you, uh, Carl. So <laughs> let's put all your damper on that red rocket. <laughs> um, <laughs> Somebody's asking if. Um, if they're they want to get into bush flying uh, and backcountry flying, and they want to join the community, are there like where should they go? Are there any groups that you recommend? You know, like 
Yep, there's there's groups on just about every social media platform. Um, the things you want to search for are the terms like bush pilot, backcountry pilot, big tire pilot. Um, those are usually the names of the groups. You'll find that on Facebook. There's a group that I actually moderate with a group of people on the uh, the Twitter X platform. Okay. Which is a, a really merging kind of a fun place to be right now. Um, but yeah, find those communities. But really, the best communities to be candid with you are the ones in person. So go to fly-ins. Just about every fly-in is going to have bush planes. Um, at Sun and Fun this year, they actually have a specific parking area for big tire type bush planes. And so you're going to have a unique opportunity at Sun and Fun this year as you're walking the grounds. If you happen across across the area where you're just like, these airplanes look like they're from that old uh, you know, planes movie or the TV show or that uh -huh. Cars Disney Pixar thing. You know, these are big, balloony, cartoony tires. And some people put the sunshades up with the eyeballs and the screens. It's just a fun community. So go out and interact with them in person. Um, and I'll close by saying uh, about the community thing. One of the best bush plane or, or stole communities is the National Stole Group, the group that puts on all those competitions. For the most part, a lot of the pilots travel because it's a series. You get points throughout the series, and then there's like a series champion at the end of each year. It's kind of a really cool thing. But they have a whole community of people that are not pilots that participate. And you can get in there and you can be a line judge. You can be standing right alongside where they're taking off and landing. You can participate and help with the event. Or you can just be a fan and, and, and hang out and have fun. Uh, but it is sure a heck of a lot of fun. So that's your invitation. Come and join us. Perfect. We have one of the viewers <laughs> asking, what does Corey think about the Arkansas this year? About no, uh, uh, no Arkansas. First of all, what is Arkansas? And what do you think about no Arkansas this year? I have not heard. So I have not been online. I've except for in the last couple of days to help promote this live stream for you guys. But to, um. I've not heard that there isn't going to be an Arkansas. So what is Arkansas? It is a it's like a motocross meets aviation event where you're flying uh, bush plane type airplanes on a very complex course and taking off and landing on seven different runways on this course. And it's a timed event, so it's a race. And uh, so it's a it's like four super skilled, super experienced aviators. Um, I have not competed in it. It's just outside of my personal risk profile. I'm a recreational pilot. <laughs> and so when it comes to the competitions, you know, I've won some stole competitions in the past and some air race competitions. Like, you know, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> brush my own feathers or anything, but I was world <laughs> champion at one point. But you know, I kind of lost my ta my personal taste for the competitions because for me, I'll go to them. So I'll go to the national stole events, but I'm not competing. I'm there hanging out and supporting and teaching and, and helping the community out and just being a part of it because I love it. This is in my blood and it's exciting to see the newcomers come in and compete and get really, really good. And most of them are better than me because I'm out landing on sandbars and mountaintops and things like that. Um, but that's really what Arkansas is. What's my opinion that they're not having an event this year? I don't know that I have an opinion. Um, I love events and I think Arkansas had a unique social spirit about it. It was a special event and the people that went there were really amazing people, but they, they have had, um, lots of criticism and it is a very controversial event and, um, I've kind of stayed out of the discussion, to be honest with you, because I'm not one to judge other people. Um, I'm one to just go out and have fun myself. Yeah. Plenty of people are out there to do that kind of thing. I don't need to be in in that conversation. <laughs> Interesting. I love I mean, I love the whole community uh, 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 bush uh, planes. I went to the Alaska uh, show last um, last year. And I was just amazed about the the quant oh I mean the main plane in Alaska is just any type of bush plane. <laughs> and I was like yeah. wow like I was like I, I when I landed at, at the main airport you see all of these uh airplanes either with uh, a ski or a, a pontoons for water landing. 
And then when we went to the show, it was just, it was all about bush plane. And yeah. we were talking to a lot of people. I was talking to a lot of people and then some of them like, this is, I don't, there was a lady. She was like, we don't have a car. This is our, uh, that's, this is our transportation. We live in the middle of nowhere and we come out to, um, to the grocery store and to, um, uh, her husband medical appointment. And she that she had like two planes. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this you'll is, see airplanes taxiing down the street in Alaska, in like, Anchorage, in the city. You'll see airplanes city. on the yeah, street. Yeah, and I'm like, this is the life. <laughs> I'm like, what? They yeah, even have it's like pretty it's cool very up popular there. there too. Like your hotel, it says that you can land and um and eat there and, uh, and then just stay there at the hotels. And I'm like, this is so cool. I love this community. It's like yeah. it, everything was either a uh, bush plane with big tires, or the tires were swapped for a pontoons or ski. And I'm like. Like, like you go around here, you see a lot of RVs, you'll see a lot of Cessnas over there. Nothing. Like, either they're turning no. to a bush plane or, <laughs> or, yeah. or, or they have yep. pontoons or skis. So, so interesting. I now, that's not to really say the RV and the Cessnas are not good bush planes, but they're, they're more for grass airstrips. You know, yes. there, you know, there's some really beautiful backcountry you can see in your RV in yeah. Oh, yeah. Idaho, for example. And so what I would like to do is extend an invitation for you guys to come out west. I want Bring to. level <laughs> aviation out west. Come out west. Let's make some videos. I will take you up into Idaho and I will take you and your RV, your airplane safely into several beautiful manicured grass strips. It'll be like landing on a golf course. It's absolutely <laughs> stunning. But then you'll get out and you'll be like, yeah. it's it's breathtaking. I'll, I'm so gonna say, come I'm on gonna out. save this video and have it as a formal invitation and put it up <laughs> in the meeting to at the next meeting so if I can put it as a company expense. It, uh, hey, it is, it is. It's all for marketing and PR. We'll make some <laughs> we'll make some fun YouTube videos, bring all your new products and we'll highlight them in the videos and but we'll make them really, really fun and we'll you know, because you'll, it's the, the best thing about it for me, I love bringing newcomers into the back country because that smile on your face is so authentic, especially if you're a nature lover, which I am. I love seeing all the different parts of this world uh, and airplanes are the best vehicle to get you there. Now, speaking of, speaking of that, where are those very interesting places that you have been and what's in the bucket list what's what's coming up for Corey? you know i don't really have a lot of grandiose plans as far as my bucket list or the things that i want to do um, right now in my life all my kids are right now between the ages of eight and 15. and so it's a very busy time for me to be engaged in their uh -huh. adolescence and their their growth and so I'm spending a lot of time with my 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 family, and that's really quite candidly been a huge part of my focus, and that's why I've been off social media and really focused on that. Um, and aviation is a big part of my life, and so you can imagine I'm teaching them about airplanes and using that to teach them about physics and science and math, and everything's an object lesson. One of my kids is homeschooled, and so I'm very engaged in their daily lives. Um, now, going back to aviation, cool places that I've been. Um, man, bush planes take you to just unnamed locations. And so some of the most memorable places, I'm going to try and, um, associate it with a video that I've made so I can kill two birds with one stone. Cause I, cause I want to bring it to life. I want to be able to show it to you. Um, Capitol reef national park is a special place on this planet. And a company that makes cameras called Panasonic uh -huh. um, had a professional, they, a professional photographer reached out to me and said, hey, I want to go take some pictures of your airplanes. And, and we got together three airplanes over Capitol Reef National Park. And um, I had the opportunity for, to participate in this camera shoot flying at both sunrise and sunset over Capitol Reef. And we had all the permits done and we had permission to fly like below the rim of some of these structures. Um, if you haven't seen that video of mine, it's, it's a lot of flying. There's just not a lot to the video other than it's just gorgeous. And that is probably one of the most... The 
<laughs> spectacular places I've ever experienced. You know, you look straight down and some of the ground looks like bacon. Some of it looks like Mars. Some of it looks, so cool. I mean, it's, it's absolutely spectacular. Um, whether you're visiting it on the ground or from the air. Where, um, where is this? It's in Southern Utah and it's called Capitol Reef National Park. If you go to my YouTube channel and just, or you search on YouTube for Corey Robin, Capitol Reef, uh, you'll find the video. Um, and we, we had this Panasonic camera that's just their DSLR. And we were able to capture some amazing shots. And um, I was just happy to be a part of it. You know, I, th this th being a, uh, the kind of aviation YouTube person. I'm not necessarily the guy that wants to go out and, and make more content of me landing at Sandbars. I want to capture stuff that's absolutely beautiful. And I want to share that. I want to expose people to things that they wouldn't think of exposing themselves to, yeah. you know, um, another location is I was flying up in Yakima, Washington, um, over an Indian reservation and Indian reservations are are really beautiful places because they're they're largely untouched. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't had a lot of um, man's um, change to them. And so I was just flying down this canyon, and the pl it, it just I just thought I was on a different planet for a minute because it was just just so wild. You know what I mean? I almost felt like. I was I had traveled back to the 1800s, but I'm flying along in an airplane because I felt very remote. <laughs> like a I felt like I felt I felt like I was in a truly remote part of our world that was, you know, kind of untouched. And it was just it was just one of those moments. And I don't know quite how to explain why it was so special to me, but um, uh, I'll post on on on. Uh, on X, a link to that video soon uh, today so that you guys can see that one too. But that canyon, just flying down that canyon, it just had a, a unique spirit about it. Like it just, it, it, you could feel the energy from that place. And it just was so vividly different than any other place I've ever been to on this planet that, you know, the trees were red. Wow. And, and you know, there was this winding river in kind of like a green swampy land and the the contrast between the greens and the reds and there were some purple flowers. I was just like, I am on like some sort of a star Wars planet. These <laughs> colors are not on earth. And it was just odd and, and beautiful. And, and uh, I appreciated it. So, and, and that's, you know, that's why I love the backcountry flying, you know, as I'm able to see those kinds of things and it's intimate. Does that make sense? It's yeah. not like, you're you're flying in a jet or in a, in your RV 4000 feet above it i'm intimate with it i'm below the below the rims of these canyons doing it in a safe way yeah um as safe as you can get flying below the rim in a canyon let's be real it's not necessarily safe if you don't have the proper training and you haven't mm -hmm. scouted it for power lines obstacles things like that but anyway suffice it to say man you can have some beautiful experiences in bush planes yeah. And there's and there are the world's easiest airplanes to fly. I mean, these are you know, that bush planes are bush planes for a reason. They fly slowly for a reason. They're very docile, forgiving aircraft, and they're they're just wonderful airplanes to learn how to fly in. They're safe. You don't necessarily have to go out and do the risky stuff. Yeah. You can you can fly airport to airport, or fly from grass strip to grass strip, or beautiful field to beautiful field. You don't have to be, you know, pushing the envelope to have a wonderful time in backcountry flying that's interesting that's pretty cool I'm we did <laughs> right me too <laughs> we do have we did uh, i don't know if you could tell that i love it <laughs> yeah no we can we can tell we did back home we did a lot of uh i would say maybe back country because we will go to yeah. like very remote places in the um in the <laughs> <laughs> what are you promoting right there? Is that is that your other? No, channel? this is this is a friend of mine. I'm 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 gonna send him a link to the video if he's not watching live. This is a cup he gave me at Oshkosh, and I just realized it. So I was like, "Hey, buddy." <laughs> so we did a lot of yeah, we did a lot of backcountry. Um, it's Angel not, Falls. And yeah, and yeah, we did the Angel Falls. We did we were landing like pretty remote places too in a 
in a sky master it's not quite a bush plane but (laughs) (laughs) but it's a great bush plane those are a workhorse (laughs) you know i can think of like in colombia delivering medical supplies to a remote village in that airplane that's bush flying yeah there's nothing wrong with that that's awesome true yeah we did a lot of a lot of one time we got stranded for like a week in one of the islands because we got there and then next day started raining and it didn't stop raining for like three days so now the runway which was short for a sky master now it's even shorter because yeah, it so like it's flat 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 yeah. <laughs> so we're just there in an island you know eating lobster and crap <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah, that was the main that, thing it, over isn't there. it funny like it, it's I'm like the main thing over there and, and there stuff. it's like two bucks for a crab <laughs> <laughs> you're like what <laughs> no, but we, i'm we gonna were... take this crab to new york and sell it for 70. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a great adventure. The only oh. thing was we got um, eaten by mosquitoes, mosquitoes that was because the there were oh, now the um, the uh, bottles, have... bottles of water then created the larva oh. and the mosquitoes came and that's when we said no. So we actually we were sleeping the inside the airplane to try to avoid the mosquitoes. It was that was it was bad. Uh, yeah. It was bad. Oh. We had, oh, we had, wow. we what an adventure. had a good time. I mean, growing up, we did like a lot of with 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 um, our family. We did a lot of mm, crazy going to like very crazy places. That now they feel like we want to go back. Uh, and yeah. then it's, it was a nice experience. Mind if we had a bush plane, like it the might. places we can go <laughs> in Venezuela. Right. Um, I think we're almost getting ready for, for to finish, but we have one more question regarding. Sure. insurance for bush planes is it the same thing or is it different for this type of flying it's the same but you're going to want to make sure that you have both an insurance agent and a policy that does cover the flying because a lot of policies have waivers and they actually prohibit off airport landings and so um, you know, the, the best things to do would be um, to call Clemens Aviation Insurance and give those guys a call. And they insure everything in, in general aviation, but they're very familiar with that country specifically, and they'll answer all your questions. It's not any more expensive, but you just necessarily, you definitely want to have the language right so that you are covered for off airport operations. What's the name? And it's just name? a it's just a paragraph. The the insurance company is Clemens okay. C L E M E N S Aviation Insurance. Perfect. And Perfect. they're but and, and and you know the thing about Clemens is you know all insurance is insurance, right? And there's just only a, there's only like four companies that actually write policies. Mm-hmm. But these guys know the business. They know bush planes. And so not only are they going to be able to get the policy written, it's going to be the least expensive option because they understand the business model. They understand the risks. They understand how to talk to the to the insurance companies that are writing the policies. And that's really the advantage. Give June a call over there. I love her to death. There you go. There you go. Make sure you let them know we send them there. (laughs) Yes. You know, they're they're wonderful people. Um, if you if you get involved in backcountry flying, I'm sure you'll run across run across run across the Clemens Aviation family. They own a big charter operation. I think they got like I don't know 15 or 20 premier jets, um, and they just fly them around. And they own the few FBOs in uh, in uh, Kansas, out of the Wichita area. Okay. They own Stearman Field in Wichita. The family does. So if you ever want to go travel back in time into aviation's nostalgic history that is a beautiful airstrip just outside of wichita nice given in given the plugs for my pals <laughs> perfect <laughs> perfect i mean i think uh we're getting to the end of our um our life here so should we do a contest or we do a raffle real quick so let's ra- let's go ahead and raffle a hat Corey. you're gonna have to answer this one for us but before okay. you give us the answer, we want the people in the uh, comment and chat to give us their best, um, the, their best guest, and then whoever answers first will give them a hat with a 
with their custom tail number and then we put uh Corey is playing on the other side too so <laughs> so Corey the question is there you go there you go the question <laughs> is when was your very first Oshkosh do not answer yet let's see if people know um the answer so you know you know you know the answer to this one right I hope you know <laughs> perfect so if you know when was um uh, Corey's first Oshkosh let us know give us your best best guess and then maybe we can give them a hand when when was your first uh what when you started flying that you say well this I'll was... give you a hint Let's it was see. the very first year that it was called Air Venture oh wow okay all right that's like that's a, <laughs> Google a big that's brand a Google brand identity <laughs> it was that yeah. it was it's very it was the yeah. very first Air Venture Wow. You're, okay. Now everybody's getting on Google. Let's see if everybody responds. I'm going to look on the live too. Now, no, you guys, that's do you call been it gone Oshkosh way longer you, than that. <laughs> do you call it Oshkosh? Do you call it Air Venture? Do you call it EAA? Well, people are answering this question. What do you, you know, call I it? call it whatever. Whatever, whatever anybody to else. Me too. When somebody says Air Venture, I think of Oshkosh. When yeah. somebody says Oshkosh, I think of Air Venture. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. perfect. <laughs> well, that's. I don't um, remember when was my first Air Venture. I remember the marketing person that worked for EAA that came up with the name Air Venture. His name was Steve. Good dude. Okay. Wow, wow. <laughs> I, I know a lot about EAA. I'm an insider, so to speak. They don't know it, but I am. I'm in their grill. Nice. <laughs> I'm nice. all up in their business. <laughs> <laughs> you are always there too, so you're always very into 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 Air Venture Oshkosh. So let's see. Um, a lot, a lot of really good guesses. I see that. So, are we ready to give away the answer? So, Corey, when was your first? Sure. Sure. My very first Oshkosh was 1997. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes. So, let's see. Yeah. We do have a 1995. We do have a 1992, 1996. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. It was, there was a lot of controversy last at that year. I remember it being my first Oshkosh and I was a little weirded out by the conversations about people being angry about the new name, ab about the Air Venture name. Oh, really? It might have been the second year. I'm going by memory, though. So, But the internet will correct me if I'm wrong. But I think it's the first year it was called Air Venture. But it might have been 96 that it was the first year. But it was definitely a – it rings a bell because it was a – it was a definitely a topic of conversation on the grounds that year that the name was changing. There was a lot of people, you know, the Oshkosh patches uh -huh. that people collect, uh -huh. you know, people didn't want to change their patches, you know, since, you know, what, when did, when did it start in Oshkosh? It moved from Rockford to Oshkosh in what year? That would be a good trivia question for, uh, for somebody. <laughs> right, we should do that next time. But yeah, my first Oshkosh, 1997, I flew there in 2038 Romeo, a Cessna 182G. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so we did have pretty good guests. So the closest one we got, Paul. I mean, actually, it was Daniela, but that's my sister. And she got enough hats already. Shout out to Daniela. Yeah. So she already has enough job, hats. She Daniel. comes all the time and says, I need a new hat and steals my hat. So, um, so congratulations to Paul LeBlanc. So you send me an email to ricardo at leville.com so you can claim your hat and then we can send it out to you. Just let us know your shipping address, your tail number, and then we'll customize it for you. Um, I think that's it for today, right? So Corey, thank you. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. I um, mean, a lot of people are here were wondering where you were and you were you're right here with us <laughs> and, i'll make some i'll make and, some videos this year it seems like maybe making, one or two we'll see um a, a lot of a lot of great videos and I, I think a lot of great content is coming up for corey so go ahead and give him a follow on youtube and uh I, you said you mentioned you are on on x twitter and so give him a follow uh corey robin and i think that's it for today um you have inspired me uh with your adventure so i'm gonna check out uh <laughs> Uh, Reef, Capital Reef National Ananda Park. Ananda is going with her van visiting every single uh, national park. She has a, That a, would a, be, a that is a beautiful place to visit. Yeah. Utah's got so many national parks. You've been here to Utah, though. I've seen your Instagram. I, I have. Yeah. Utah was yeah. my favorite. I had never been, but yeah. I was crossing 
uh, from California to Florida in the van, yeah. and I was trying to check as many national parks as I could. And uh, I did not get to Capitol Reefs National Park, but I saw some others. And it's just like you say, it's it's very intimate, and you know, it just you feel so lucky and alive and humble at the same time yeah. and fortunate. So yeah, yeah, good times. Yeah. All right, guys, Absolutely. if you have any question, feel free to give me a call. My phone number is, I'm going to pop it up on the screen right there, 407-542-3971. If you have any questions, you can also follow us on our social media, uh, levelaviation.com. And, um, well, Level Aviation on Instagram, Twitter. Um, oh, we don't have Twitter yet. Well, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. We also have a Facebook community group. So... If you are in the area, I mean, if you want to ask other pilots what they're doing, um, uh, the installation, all that stuff, go to Level Aviation uh, dash groups dash level a uh, Facebook dot com groups dash Level Aviation, and you find our official community just page. Read, just read. <laughs> Pay attention to Ricardo. Yeah, and if you have any questions <laughs> about support, go to aviation support at level dot com. Our support team will be more than happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have, and I mean, we have our 15% discount store-wise, so make sure you go to get your hat. Well, where's our camera? Right here. Get your hat, your shirt, um, and your autopilot as well. And if you're going to be at Sun and Fun, make sure you stop by and say hi to me, Ananda, Michelle. The entire crew will be at Sun and Fun Hangar A, uh, booth 10. So I think that's it for today. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Corey. I mean, Corey. <laughs> Sorry. I go by either. Thank you, Corey, and then we'll see you next.